This is CPM Calculus Chapter 3, number 27. If f of 15 equals to negative 3 and f of 20 equals to 4, must f of x have a root between x equals 15 and 20? Explain why or why not. Okay. Be sure to include sketches that support your reasoning. So here is a sketch, right? Here we'll say x is 15 and 20, right? If we know here's negative 3 and here is 4. If we know f of 15 is negative 3, that means our graph is defined at negative 15 to be negative 3 here. I mean, at positive 15 to be negative 3 and at 20 to be 4. Okay? So these are the two points that are defined. This question is basically saying, is there a root between these two values? Well, a root, remember, what is a root? A root is where our function crosses the x-axis. So if our graph connects like this, if, it's connect, if it connects between these two points, it doesn't matter what's to the left here and to the right, right? If we know if these two points connect, then it crosses the x-axis somewhere. So there's the root, right? But let's look at another example. Okay, so if this is 15 again, this is 20, this is negative 3, this is 4. Okay, so in this example, we see at 15, our value is negative 3, right? F of 15 is negative 3. At 20, it's 4. Well, this the, the prompt does not say anything about the function being continuous. So our function can go like this, right? And it can stop there. And it can start there. It can go up, you know, whatever. And it could go to the right, okay? So between here and here, we don't know what's going on um, since it does not say our function f of x is continuous. So must it have a root? No. It must only if the function f of x is continuous. Otherwise, you don't know. Like, otherwise, it might or it might not. Otherwise, it might or might not. Right? There's no must about it. Okay? So here's a sketch where it does have a root. Here's a sketch where it doesn't. And the point is, if the function is not continuous, then you can't say for sure that it crosses the x-axis. All right, this ends CPM Calculus Chapter 3, number 27.